Before this project's finished, we're going to make two changes. First, we're going to add another tab to the UI tab bar controller that will show popular petitions. And second, we're going to make our loading code a little more resilient by adding error messages. As I said previously, we can't really put the second tab into our storyboard because both tabs will host the same view controller class, and doing so would require us to duplicate the view controllers in the storyboard. You can do that if you really want, but please don't. It's a maintenance nightmare. Instead, we're going to leave our current storyboard configuration alone, then create the second view controller using code. This is not something you've seen before, but it's not hard and we already took the first step, as you'll see. So, in Xcode, please choose appdelegate.swift. This file's been in all our projects so far, but it's not one we've had to work with until now. It controls the way our application responds to system events, such as when an app's launched, or it's gone to the background, or as someone shared a file from another app into our app. You'll see in there, we have this method called did finish launching with options. This will normally be at the top of the file, and it's called by iOS when the app's finished launching and you're doing last minute configuration. We're gonna hijack it to insert a second view controller into our tab bar. Now we already have this sort of return true line in there, but we're gonna add some code before there, just so this comment is saying override point for customization. In here, we're going to say, if let tab bar controller equals window question mark dot root view controller as question mark UI tab bar controller then let storyboard equals a UI storyboard with the name being main and the bundle being nil let VC equals a storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier nav controller then vc.tabbar item equals a UI tab bar item with the system item of dot top rated and tag of one. Then tab bar controller dot view controllers question mark dot append vc. Now every line in there is new, so let's dig in deeper. First we have this line here, line 18, which looks at the window question mark dot root view controller and optionally typecasts it as a UI tab bar controller. This window is a property of the app delegate. It's up here, var window is an optional UI window. That was made for us by the Xcode template. It's the window in which our app is running right now. And all windows have a root view controller. What is the main thing taking up the window right now? In our case, for this app, we embedded everything inside a tab bar controller. So our default windows, default root view controller will be a tab bar controller. Now we have if let here, so we're being safe. We're saying, let's make sure the windows root view controller is a tab bar controller, because it might not be in the future. But for now, we're checking very carefully if it is. And if it is, then lines 19 through 22 get run. And we want to create an instance of our view controller class. And if you remember, that was embedded inside a navigation controller. And that navigation controller had the storyboard identifier, nav controller in main.storyboard. So what this code does is, first it finds main.storyboard in our bundle. It loads it into a type called UI storyboard. And then uses that to instantiate the nav controller using the nav controller identifier. We then attach a tab bar item to that view controller, to the nav controller. Uh, using the top rated tab bar system item, giving it a tag one. Now, if you remember, we had the flag buttons, we had tag zero, one, and two to identify them uniquely. Here, we have the same view controller class loading again and again and again. So we're gonna identify those by having tag zero and one. That'll become important in just a minute. And then to show this navigation controller, we append it to the view controllers array of our tab bar controller. So the code as a whole creates a duplicate view controller wrapped inside the navigation controller, gives it a new tab bar item to distinguish it from the existing tab, then adds the list of visible tabs. This lets us use the same class for both tabs without having to duplicate things in the storyboard. Now, this tag one, that's there to the tab bar item gets an easy way to identify which view controller is which when they're both back to our same class. 
Remember, both tabs have a view controller, the same view controller class Xcode made for us with a template, which means the same code executed. Right now, that means both will download the same JSON feed, which makes having two tabs pointless. But if we modify URL string in viewcontroller.swift, we can fix that. So I'll go there now, and you can see up here in viewdid load, we have let URL string equals this hardcoded URL here. Instead, I'm going to say let URL string is some kind of string. Then, if navigation controller question mark dot tab bar item dot tag is equal to zero, that URL string will be the string we have already. Otherwise, we're going to use the top rated stuff. We're going to say URL string is equal to https colon slash slash api dot whitehouse dot gov slash v1 slash petitions dot json signature count floor equals uh, how many signatures it should have to be shown in this list. I'll say 10,000 ampersand limit equals 100. So only show me the most popular petitions up to 100 at a time. Now again, this is the actual White House live URL. It might exist, it might not exist, it might change in the future, which will break the tutorial badly. Um, so to avoid that, I've got a copy of that same JSON stored today at this URL. And I'll copy it from my previous one here. Uh, it is petitions2.json. And that loads the popular petitions from my site, my cached copy, rather than a live copy. If you want to use live, fine, if it works, great. If it goes down in the future or changes in the future, just use my cache copy instead. At this point, the project's almost done. But we're going to make one last change. Our current loading code isn't very resilient. We have a couple of if statements here, checking things are working correctly, but no else backing them up to show an error message if there's a problem. This is easily fixed by adding a new show error method that creates a UI alert controller showing a general failure message. So we'll say func show error. Let AC equals a UI alert controller with the title loading error and the message there was a problem loading the feed. Please check your connection and try again. For its style, I'm going to say dot alert. Then we'll add a button to that by saying ac dot add action, a UI alert action, the title being OK, style being default, and no handler, so it just dismisses the thing by default. Then present ac animated true. So nothing too surprising in this show error code. So now we can adjust our JSON downloading and parsing code call this error method everywhere a condition fails. Like this, we have uh, if let data equals try data, parse JSON, else show error. And if the URL creation fails, again we'll have else show error. So it calls the same show error method regardless. Alternatively, we could rewrite this to be a little bit cleaner by inserting return after the call to parse. This means the method would exit if parsing was reached. So if we get to the end of the method, it means parsing wasn't reached, and we can show the error instead. So instead, I'll get rid of this else block here and say return, like that. End as soon as parsing's worked. Then afterwards, get rid of that else and just show an error regardless. Because if we get to that point, we know that parsing's failed or URL creation's failed, something's failed, so we should show an error. Both approaches are perfectly valid. Do whichever you prefer. Regardless of which you opt for, now that error messages shown when the app hits problems, we're done. Good job.